We thought the end zone from Sony was pretty impressive with its like 90 plus dimming zones. Well, 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 for only a hundred dollars more, you can get the Tempest GP27U from Cooler Master. I am pretty excited about this. There's been a lot of talk online about it. Um, it's mini LED, quantum dot. It does 160 Hertz. I think it's 4K. And the best part is it has something like 500 plus dimming zones, which is absolutely incredible in a small 27 inch screen like this. We're getting a peak brightness of like 12 or even 1500 nits or something like that. This thing hits a crazy amount of color gamut as well, hitting something like 83% of Rec 709. I hate it when they pack it like this. I can't like, okay, this is a really minor thing, but it's hard to pull out until you get a handle like right here. There we go. As much of a pain as it was to get it out of the box, the packaging is very tight. Like I could, I feel like I could ship this thing across the world and not worry about it. What do we got? We got the stand that I'm, it's okay. I'm just not crazy about how they did the RGB. We've got big old bag of cables. We got our stand here with a circular design. Sure, power brick, get that down there. And then here's the panel. Honestly, this is kind of the monitor to buy if you're wanting to spend about $1,000, especially if you're not looking for ultra wide. The new AW3423DWF has, I mean, it's QD OLED. Like it's just gonna be, it's, uh, I don't know. It's hard to argue because like QD OLED is really nice and it gets pretty bright, but mini LED just straight up gets brighter. So it's like, what do you want? Do you want a few hundred more nits or would you prefer faster pixel response times, deeper blacks? This thing is also 4K, whereas the Alienware is 1440p ultra wide. It does look vase mountable. One, two, three, four. But we're just gonna pop this bad boy in. As for the stand, it's okay. It's got these really hefty rubber grips on the bottom, so it's not going anywhere. And then it's got the uh, always preferable captive screw to screw everything in. It looks like we've got some RGB on these guys here. Cool diffusion going on. Big old Cooler Master stamp on the back. That's fine. I don't mind when the branding is on the back. Like who cares? You're never really gonna see the back once you've installed it anyway. And then on the front, we've just got this little Cooler Master logo right there. It's an ultra speed IPS panel. While we're seeing a lot of like VA mini LED screens, maybe it's because this one's only 160 Hertz, but regardless, you're getting IPS, which is kind of nice. The IO on this thing is pretty good. Power adapter, a couple USB-A, USB-B, a USB-C. This USB-C is actually pretty impressive, by the way. It's got 90 watt power delivery, which is like, I don't know, that's about as high as you're gonna find on most displays. And on top of that, it can do DisplayPort alternate. So if you want to just plug in a laptop and check it out, it's not only going to display an image, but it's gonna charge it at the same time. And then we've got one DisplayPort port, probably 1.4. And then we've got two HDMI, both of them 2.1 spec. So you're looking at like 48 gigabit per second. Uh, so you're absolutely gonna be able to get your 4K 160 Hertz output with HDR on and everything. It's also got a KVM built in. While we're checking that out, I gotta point out, it's got the nice little navigation apple here that I'm fond of, as well as a Kensington lock. We've also got our little cable routing clip already attached to the stand. And as for the versatility of it, let's see what we can do. I can pivot, oh baby, so you can go, I don't know why you ever would, but you can go portrait if you want to. We can tilt, which is great. Not a ton of rotation, but there's enough height adjustment. And can we put it in the middle? Yes, we can, no problem. This thing actually seems great. I'm a really big fan of a stand like this, especially ones that let you rotate around the base here. It just feels sturdier when you go to move it. I don't know, maybe that's just me. Anyway, we're gonna boot it up, take a quick look, maybe check out the RGB, but not until a word from our sponsor, Jackery. Thanks to Jackery for sponsoring today's video. Their Solar Generator 2000 Pro Portable Power Station has enough juice to keep all of your devices powered and connected. The massive 2000 watt hour capacity and 2200 watt output allows up to eight devices to be plugged in simultaneously. Check out the SG2000 Pro at the link below. We went to set it up and we forgot to actually talk about the cables. So we've got our big beefy power brick. This looks like DisplayPort. We have our USB-B, USB-C cable. And the nice thing about this USB-C cable is I bet you they've rated it for DisplayPort as well. So this is probably gonna do it all. 90 watt power and DisplayPort. And then it looks like they've given us one HDMI 2.1 cable. All right, there we go. We got everything plugged in, it all fired up. Looks like we're not getting RGB on the stand this time. That's fine. Do we have it on the back? Yes, I was correct. So these are just diffusions on the back and I'm pretty sure you can set that to whatever color you want. So that's pretty cool. Thanks, Cooler Master. As for the display itself, let's see what we got. You know, you can see we're getting 10 bit. We've got HDR on with our 3090, but for some reason we're limited to 144 Hertz. I'm not sure why. Let's see if we can overclock it manually. 
the box says right there, 160 hertz. Does not appear to be anywhere that we can find. And now I'm gonna try to overclock it and test failed, what? We actually had labs take a quick look at this thing too, and they couldn't get it to 160 either. So we're not sure what's happening with Cooler Master on this one. Now, if you don't wanna use HDR for whatever reason, I don't know why you wouldn't with a mini LED panel, but the SDR is actually plenty bright as well. Like if I turn HDR off, this is SDR. And no, we're not gonna have crazy dynamic range, but this is insanely bright for an SDR experience. We're hitting something like 600 nits, and that's just absolutely wild. Let's play Counter-Strike in HDR. I'm kidding, Counter-Strike doesn't have HDR. Um, dimmer. Th the reason it's dimmer is because now it has a proper range. Wow. Damn, this looks really pretty though. Hold on, bet you it can look better. Maximum brightness, 500? I don't think so. We measured a top end of 1500 nits peak brightness in this thing. I don't know if it should go up to 1500. As soon as you do, you start to clip on a, on a few things. So I'm gonna set it to the rated uh, 1200 nits that this thing is rated at. It's actually got a base rating of a thousand, um, but we've definitely measured higher than that. Wow. One minor issue we had when using the OSD with this thing is that instead of confirming by clicking in the button, that takes the OSD away. So if you do buy this thing and you want to apply settings, tick it over to the right again, and that'll say yes or no, basically. Come on, NVIDIA, you're 3090. 40 FPS, baby. Yeah, it's pretty choppy, but that's the problem. We're 4K gaming with HDR, ray tracing enabled. Cyberpunk is just hard to run. Hell yeah. I'm gonna try something else. Cyberpunk looks great, but it just doesn't work well enough. And the reality is this thing's doing 144 Hertz. So we might as well take advantage of that. All right, we're in 4K, 144 Hertz, V-Sync off, brightness 50, HDR on. I'm setting it to 1200, because I swear if we go to 1500, it's gonna look a little blown out, but that's okay. Wow. Pixel response time is great. They measure it at like a half a millisecond or something like that, but also you can do different overdrive and stuff on this thing. God, this looks good though. Spider-Man might not be the best game to actually check for different highlights and whatnot, but it sure looks pretty and the colors really pop. One minor thing that we noticed is that if you want to use any sort of like color adjustment stuff, you can't use the extra modes that they give you. So they've given you all these modes because they define this thing as kind of the, the all-in-one monitor, um, really good for everything. But as soon as we go to, yeah, HDR game mode. So if we go to game, we lose color adjust right away. And if we go to movie, it's the same thing. There's no color adjust. So you have to stay on user if you want to do any sort of color adjustment out of HDR, just in SDR content, um, the same thing happens when you're not using either standard or user one or user two. As soon as you go to like film or Adobe or whatever, um, you suddenly get locked out of the color adjust. And it's just kind of, I don't understand why they'd lock you out of it. Maybe it's to stay perfectly set to whatever they set it to, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I just don't like losing anything. So now the really cool thing about this thing is look at how much overdrive options we have. We've got normal advanced, ultra fast, dynamic, and user. If I go to user, you can crank it to different levels of overdrive, which is super cool. We found issues, so we'll go up to 100 here. We found issues at 100, and zero basically looked okay, but we found that you just want a little bit. You want like 10 or 20. Otherwise, we'll probably get some inverse ghosting here. Let me just crank it to 100. I don't notice anything in game, but we're gonna do a UFO test after to see if we're getting any. Oh, I think I can kind of see it on his suit, but it's pretty minor. It's actually not too bad. I'm not getting inverse ghosting, I'm getting ghosting. And it's pretty minor. We cranked it down to 20. Yeah, that ghosting is now basically gone. And this looks pretty crisp. Okay, so that's all the way off. And it looks pretty good, but the top alien could be just a little bit clearer. He's just a little smeary. Honestly, unless you've got a really trained eye, I wouldn't even worry about this too much. I would set it to a little bit of overdrive, but not too much. This looks beautiful though, I gotta admit. And the mini LED really gets bright. There's a bit of judder when it's panning, which is kind of more typical of OLED, um, but that's also possibly just the video. It's possibly it's on YouTube's end. It's not OLED, so you're not gonna get those like perfectly black blacks, but it's getting pretty dark. And the white and lighter stuff still really stands out and pops on it. 
and his lanterns look fantastic. The quantum dots on this guy really just absolutely help with the color gamut. This thing is getting about 83% coverage of Rec 2020, which is HDR, and that's a lot of color space. Would I buy it? Okay, it's $1,000. That's already a lot of money. It's 4K, 100 and, it says on 160, but something's gotta be up with ours. Um, or maybe there's an OSD setting we're not sure of, but we're getting 144 and it's 27 inches. My personal opinion is that 27 inches at 4K is a little too small for 4K. So my only real problem with this monitor is that it's not like 32. That being said, pixel density snobs are gonna really like that it's 4K 27, so it's up to, you know, personal preference. I don't want this monitor. Mini LED is really coming a long way and it looks fantastic and I don't think you're gonna find much better at this price point. If you're willing to go up a little bit, then you can get a QD OLED, but then you're stuck with ultra wide 1440p, which really might not be for you. If you're looking at the in zone for a really high local dimming zone display, I would instead spend the extra hundred dollars and get this thing every day of the week. A thousand dollars for the 4K 27 inch version is a little much, however, They've got a 27 inch 1440p version with basically the same specs for $680. So you could save yourself over 300 bucks, probably more including taxes, and just get the 1440p version. That's what I would do personally. I think that this is a fantastic choice for any gamers looking for a more high-end display. And for any patient gamers out there, keep waiting because holy crap, the display market is just getting absolutely wild for the first time in years, in my opinion. That's the Tempest GP27U from Cooler Master. It's pretty cool, uh, definitely worth checking out, especially if you're into mini LED. Thanks for watching, I'm Ploof, this is Short Circuit. If you wanna check out another display video, maybe you look at the InZone video, the M9 from Sony. It was pretty good, but now this thing's kind of the king. <laughs> Dirt, 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 dirt